do you like action platformer games? Miss the old school feel? A fan of the Ratchet and Clank series? Well, I just got my hands on Akimbo, one of the newest games like this. So the big question is, is it worth your time and money? Let's find out. There is a shortage of advanced platformers with a bit of humor on the market these days, probably because creating something on the level of Crash Bandicoot or Spyro costs a lot. In the indie world, platformers often mean 2D pixel art. Akimbo, though, takes it further with more modern 3D action in wacky, robot filled future world. In simple terms, it's an action platformer blending classic elements with new tech. In overall, you will get to control not one, but two main characters. Well, sometimes mostly will control Exit. On chaotic adventure to save the world by beating up bad guys in various areas. It's got plenty of action, a sprinkle of humor, and most importantly, plenty of bad kicking. Nice. Some folks compare it to the Ratchet and Clank, and I can see the resemblance. You play as Exy, a former mercenary who, thanks to being in the wrong place at the wrong time, ends up with a bounty on his robohead, captured by some gangster bounty hunters he meets Shipset, an ex-banker drone who decided to rob the bank he used to work at. Fantastic idea, right? This is the worst! Shipset is all about money and sometimes way too chatty, while Exy is more the silent get it done type. The relationship evolves as they are thrown together in this crazy mission. Eventually, they stop bickering and become a team. Then, an admiral from the government makes Exy an offer he can't refuse. Find a powerful artifact before everywhere that, obviously, every scientist gets his class or, in this case, robot tentacles on it. The artifact, according to legends, can control time and space. And if evil robot called Evilware gets it, you know, bad stuff is going down. Well, clearly, something evil. I won't spoil too much, but the story is packed with twists, make it a fun ride where fully predicting the plot is pretty much a hard thing to do. Not everything is that obvious from the start. But from the start, you get the basics, double jump, dash and melee attacks, and believe me, in a king bot you will be double jumping and dashing constantly. The melee attacks go beyond the usual hit the button setup, letting you perform mid-air spin attack or a drop attack that deals solid damage. But honestly, once I got my hands on my first firearm, I pretty much left melee in the dust. Quick stuff, if you are into indie games and hidden gems, consider subscribing. You will stay up to date on cool releases, and I will keep bringing you info on awesome games you never heard of. Thanks and back to the video. You will unlock 4 different guns in total. I will only spoil the first two for you here. Starting with the assault rifle. It was okay, but it's overheat super fast and by the time I got the sniper rifle, yes, in platformer, I was pretty much done with it. Each weapon has its purpose, but overheating is a pain, especially with assault rifle. And at first I was skeptical about sniper rifle, but it happens to be my favorite weapon later. So what is this overheating thing? As you shoot, your weapon's temperature rises, if it overheats, fire rate drops, then you will need to switch to another gun or wait a few seconds for it to cool down. It's a nice challenge, but got annoying in tight situations. You will face a good mix of enemy types and they each have unique abilities depending on the world you are in. These stages are packed with traps, mechanics and unexpected events, keeping things fresh. Newly every level introduces something new or at least puts a twist on familiar mechanics. I really respect the developer for putting in this extra effort to make each stage feel somewhat different. Between levels you will also find mid-stages where you might race a car, fly a spaceship or do other agility-based challenges. It's a fun old-school vibe, reminding me of games where developers aim at to keep players entertaining rather than just selling a product. Akimbot treats players as more than just consumers, it respects our time and attention. However, in the late game things seem a bit rushed. Instead of the usual progression to harder levels, a Kim both leans heavily into big shootouts with larger enemy groups. The story explains it, why it's happening and why it's like that, but it does slow down the gameplay a bit. Also, these enemies are the opposite of the Star Wars Stormtroopers. They will nail you before you even see them. For those who enjoy hidden collectibles, there are 33 hidden lost data. Some are so hidden I had to look them up online for hints. For the record, I didn't encounter any bugs or glitches during my playthrough, nothing like old characters falling through the floors, audio mishaps or weird physics problems, which is impressive. The devs clearly put a lot into debugging and it shows, but of course there were a few design quirks. First, those enemies with sniper level accuracy in the late game. Not a fan. Enemies seem to know exactly where you are even when they technically can't see you, but they are programmed in the way to be pretending that they don't. Once you will show your face, they will shoot with everything they have to stop you. 
then there is a ship set. He is funny and many times he's just a jerk, but at one point in the game he meets an older bot he really doesn't like. I can't understand it, but his constant whining about it gets old fast. The bot is helping us out, yet ship set just keep morphing off, which makes him feel less like a comic relief and more like an actual jerk. If you are playing with a controller, there is one part near the end that's tricky. A wall run for an achievement. That's nearly impossible on a controller due to inverted controls mid-air. Switch it to keyboard solve it for me. On keyboard you need just to call the D or A all the time and that's it. You got the achievement. And then optimization. Oh boy, I was playing on RTX 3070, plenty of power for 2K resolution on high settings. But typically to today's standards, in video settings you can turn on the LSS technology and on quality settings the game from time to time had some hiccups in intense scenes on screen, which was very annoying to me and even quite disappointing comparing it to the rest of the game. Like seriously, why? Some people might say Akimbot looks outdated. Often they are just blind and they expect big visual jumps and graphical improvements to compare it to old games. But it's clearly the devs used modern tools to create a style that fits. The worlds are filled with futuristic, robotic aesthetic with each map bringing something fresh. But I was enjoying, the game has many colors and it delivers pleasant visual experience. The soundtrack is mostly electronic matching the vibe of the robot world perfectly. But fair warning, the music is a bit too loud by default so you may want to adjust it. So, spill the oil, how'd you wind up in the back of a mob car? Hey, I'm not in this to make a friend. No small talk, drone. Oh, this is gonna be fun. And while the voice acting isn't going to win any awards, the characters' interactions are entertaining and make you want to keep going. I was happy by the level of quality it was made and definitely voice actors has some experience, which let them create more interesting characters. Honestly, a Akimbot was better than I expected, I went in knowing very little to avoid spoilers and I came out pleasantly surprised. Sure, there were a few hiccups and flaws, but what game doesn't have them? For $20 this game is packed with quality, especially considering some games at this price deliver far less. I can genuinely say I had fun with it. I didn't have to spend hours hunting down useless collectibles or trekking across some massive open world with a fast travel. Instead I got a well paced enjoyable action platformer. And if you miss the old school platformer vibe, this one is worth a shot. If you want to check out Akimbo, there is a link in the description. And hey, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. I will keep bringing you info on other indie games and lesser known projects, so consider subscribing for more. See you later, bye. Yoohoo, Mr. Driver! Shut up, drone! Oh, but it's important! I said cram it, you sack of crap! I can do this all day! Oh, for butt's sake! What?